Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Chat to a Champ session today. Um, I am joined by one of our females, Jackie Narricott, who is joining us all the way from um, the USA. Jackie, do you want to um, start off letting us know where you are, why you're there, and sort of what you've been doing over the last uh, three months since our school strategy to you last time? Hey, guys. Um, so we're in Park City in Utah for the second World Cup race of our season. We got here on Saturday after racing in Lake Placid, which is also in the US, which was first race of the year. Um, for the last few months, it's been basically sliding. So I got to Canada end of September, I was in Canada for a month. And then I went over to South Korea for 10 days to get more training down the Olympic track. And now we're into race season. Awesome. Okay, so today we, um, I've got some great questions being sent in by Beachboro Christian School in Bennett Springs in uh, Western Australia, as well as, as, well as uh, St. Philomena School in Bathurst. So we've got two different sides of the country, country today asking you some questions. Um, and then I think we have some other schools joining in to uh, hear all of your answers. So let's start off with one from Beachboro Christian School. This, one, this question is um, from Sam Robinson, who wants to know, what are your other passions outside of skeleton? Ooh, other passions. Okay, uh, not appropriate for kids, but wine. <laughs> <laughs> wine, coffee. Uh, I love to cook as well. That's something that keeps me sane, particularly on tour when we've got kitchens. It's a good one. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, so next question, what made you take up skeleton? How did you get into the sport? <laughs> Curiosity, really. Um, so my uncle was a bobsledder. I happened to be in the right place at the right time to try bobsled and went up with our skeleton coaches at the same time and curiosity got the better of me so was back home for six weeks after bobsledding and then back on a plane out to the US. So much more fun. And the rest is history. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. All right, this question is from Christy who wants to know how long um, do you hope to keep doing skeleton for? That's a tough one. I'd love to go for another four years. Um, but it is very much a financial decision after the Pyeongchang. So we'll get through this year, see where funds lie, and then we'll go from there. Awesome. Next uh, Winter Olympics is in uh, Beijing in China, which will be the first games, first city to host both a summer and winter game. So fingers crossed that you can make it for that one as well. Um, next question uh, comes from Bathurst. Uh, where do you train for skeleton? Maybe you can kind of say in Australia and then overseas as well. Okay, so when I'm back home, I train in Rizzi at QIS, which is just lifting and sprinting because obviously we don't have a track in, in the Southern Hemisphere and in Oz we don't have a push track either. Then once we get over to the Northern Hemisphere, it is, there's four tracks in Canada and uh, America, well done by the end of this season. Um, and then Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, plus obviously the most important one this year, South Korea. Awesome. All right, Diane wants to know, how many sports have you played at an advanced level? At an advanced level, it would be two, so, well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> Athletics, bobsled, kind of, and then skeleton. Awesome. Depends on what we most, have. Of our, most of our... Most of our... Sliding sports athletes come from some some sort of sprinting background. You've got to have lots of speed to uh, kick yourself down that mountain, don't you? Yeah. All right. The next question from Bathurst is, is it hard to steer your sled? At times, yes. So for the most part, actually, it might be hard to see, but I have my sled with me this time around. So... Uh, yeah, it's too hard to see. Uh, but it's not too hard to steer as long as things are going straight. The really high pressure corners, it can be a little difficult, but that's where toes comes in and really hard knee steering. Awesome. So we, what do you do with your toes when you're steering? Put them, so basically you use it as a bit of a, as a pivot point. So it's the hardest steer and it's the fastest steer because it's the furthest back from our center of gravity. Um, and that's, you put your toe on the ice, friction causes it to turn. Awesome. All right. So this uh, next question is where, well, you just showed us what your sled looks like. Where did you get your sled and how long is it? Okay. Uh, so it is 1.2 meters long and I got it from Bromley Sports, which is a British company. 
who makes some of the best plugs in the world. Oh, lost you. Still there? there we go. Got you back. Okay, right. <laughs> Did you hear any of that answer? Uh, we got to, it's 1.2 meters long, and then we lost you. <laughs> okay, yeah, so 1.2 meters long. It's made by Bromley Sports, which is a British company. Awesome. Um, and what do you do if you break it? Uh, burst into tears. <laughs> <laughs> it basically what happens if I break that. Um, so the maroon part is fiberglass. So if that breaks, then we can just fix it with fiberglass. The rest of it is steel. So it's a case of bending it back. Hopefully, worst case scenario. Um, or then we can replace parts. But they, they tend to be a little bit difficult to get a hold of once we're out, once we're out on circuit. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay, this question is from Rochelle. Uh, what is the minimum age for competing in skeleton? Sorry, I missed that. Um, this question is from Rochelle. Um, what is the minimum age for competing in skeleton? I believe it's 16, but it could very well be 14. I think you have to be 16 to compete in the Olympic Games, I think, as a general rule across both summer and winter. Yeah. Um, but, Rochelle, we're not sure. We'll check for you and let your teacher know. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. Uh, is it dangerous and have you ever come off your sled and hurt yourself? Yes, it is dangerous to a certain extent. But as far as statistics, statistics go, it's the safest of the three sliding sports, thankfully, <laughs> even though it looks the craziest. Uh, yeah, I've crashed five times, I think I'm at two now, which is far too many. Um, but no broken bones. The worst I had was a bit of ice burn on my shoulder, and I've had a couple of concussions. So it's in the scheme of things, nothing. Not too bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Comes with the sport, really, doesn't it? When you're uh, kind of flying yourself down a mountain on ice headfirst. Um, next question is um, also from Bathurst. How did you feel the first time you, I guess, went in your first skeleton race? In my first race, um, I'd only been sliding three weeks when I first raced. Um, so it was a, I was nervous, definitely. Um, and that kind of continued on throughout like the first races down any tracks are always a little bit nerve-wracking um first race on world cup i was really nervous for um but you you learn to to deal with it awesome all right this question is from freya does the skeleton or the sled does it have a break on it nope that would be my feet <laughs> <laughs> so you were kind of explaining that to us before that's how you uh Slow down. Not that you're trying to slow down. You're trying to go as fast as you possibly can. But if you need to, you can yeah. use your feet yeah, out the back. Once we cross the finish line, that's how we that's how we stop. Just, so our spikes, uh, that they're needle-like spikes. So the friction that they create in the ice, ideally, slows it down. And then <laughs> a lot of the tracks that are the fast ones, they actually put foam padding out in the in the track, so we kind of slam into that. Great. <laughs> Yeah, Sounds like nice. a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. Um, do you, this question is from Bathurst. Do you need a special uniform when you are sliding down the mountain? Um, ideally, so once we get to the, this level, everyone's in speed suits, which I don't have handy. <laughs> um, it's buried in amongst all my stuff. Um, <laughs> but basically, so as far as the rules go, all you need is to have long pants and a long suit shirt and a helmet, and you're good to go. Awesome. It's like Kathy Freeman style suit um, to keep make, make sure you're nice and fast as you yes. go head first. All right. Next question is from Kai. How do you calm your nerves before you race? Uh, deep breaths, music, um, and I'm working on a new technique basically where I kind of ground myself into the floor and try and focus on what I'm feeling and then broaden things out so that it's not so the, the feelings I've got, I don't have so much control over me. Okay, awesome. But the, the, deep, the deep breath one is definitely the best one that I've found so far. Awesome. Okay, you kind of answered the question, this question earlier. Um, is there anywhere in Australia that you can try skeleton? I'd love to say yes, but not yet. We, Hopefully. we need a push. One day. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, I think that would, yeah. make, would make recruiting a lot easier. 
Yeah, and I'm sure our um, fellow sliding sports, Luge and Bobsled, would also uh, like to get a track happening in Australia so that you can do some training down in the mountains here. Okay, this question, uh, another question from Beachboro. Uh, do you think more people should do this sport of skeleton? Definitely. Um, I'm the only girl currently, so I would love it if there were more female Aussie skeleton athletes. Makes make life a little bit more fun. Plus, when I retire, if it's just me, then the legacy that we've built up over the last sort of 10 years kind of disappears, which, which sucks. Yeah, definitely. All right, another question from Bathurst. Do you have a special diet that you follow while you're training and competing? Not really. Try to eat as healthy as I can, particularly once we get on tour. Um, trying to make sure I get enough green veg because that tends to be the one thing that lacks severely <laughs> over here. Um, but the rest of it at this point in time is just making sure that I keep enough weight on and keep energy levels up because sliding is as much mentally tiring as what it is physically tiring. Yeah, that's really interesting that you that you uh, comment on weight. I watched a video the other day that talked about um, the sled and the athlete have to be a certain um, com combined weight. Can you just explain that for our schools? Okay, so there's two ways to go about this rule. Um, there's the way that I do it, which is basically that my sled weighs 28.7 kilo, which for girls, the minimum weight is 29 kilo. Now, if my sled goes over 29 kilo, then I, then myself and the sled need to be below 92 kilo combined. But I'm in the fortunate position because my sled is under 29 kilo. I can then weigh whatever I need to, to be as fast as I can. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. It's a much easier way to go about it. Whereas other people who are on a weighted sled then have to play the diet game and make sure that that come run one they haven't eaten too much or drank too much and then put them over that 92 kilo limit yeah right okay um samuel from beach Bay christian school wants to know how do you warm up before you race basically like a sprinter um because the the push start is is essentially everything so lots of uh running drills lots of um run throughs just everything to, to keep legs or to get legs moving um but maintaining as much energy energy as we can Awesome. All right, this one uh, might take you a little bit to explain, but how does a skeleton competition work? Okay. How do you win? Right, how do I win? Okay, basically, uh, so for the Olympics, we'll start there. Uh, the fastest combined time of four runs wins. So every run counts, um, and then we're, we're ranked throughout, and the ranking, the start order changes, but basically, fastest combined time at the, at the end of the race wins awesome so really not that complicated to explain at all is it <laughs> not at all if you if you look into the rules and like try and work out like who's going to go where and all the rest of it in the orders then that gets a little bit confusing but the, okay. the rules are easy so does that mean that the person who thinks that they're going to win or that, you know, the few people that are going for the gold medal they want to go towards the end so they can try and be the last one with the fastest time or you play the waiting game? Um, so we don't get to choose. Um, oh, okay. How it works is, I'm not sure if this will be the case for the Olympics, but for the World Cups, the way it sits at the moment is uh, the bottom five athletes in the draw get drawn for the, for the start numbers one to three. Then the top 10 athletes in the world, so the best guys in the world, get drawn for spots four to whatever that is. 11 or whatever, 12, um, and then the rest was going rank order. However, second run, it then goes last to fast. So the fastest guys will always be last. Um, okay. Day two of the Olympics, it's reversed and we go f uh, first to last. And then fourth run again, it's reversed. So last goes first. Goes la yeah, last goes first and first goes last. And how many runs do you have at an Olympic Games? Four. Um, Top to, so the fourth run gets cut at 20, so the fastest 20 girls or athletes will get a fourth run. Unfortunately for the girls' field, because we're so tiny, as long as, as long as the run gets done safely, we're all getting four runs. Uh, but okay. for the guys, it'll get cut at 20. Okay, so there are 
Um, how many and how many female competitors and male competitors at an Olympic Games? So twenty girls and thirty men. Okay, so they'll cut ten from the boys. All right, that was my own. They were my own little <laughs> questions. Keep going. We'll go back to our questions from our schools now. Um, another question from Bathurst: um, How many medals have you won? I have won. more than that yeah something like that no world cup medals just yet which are the most important ones um so there's hopefully. there's a few different there's a few different um competitions kind of happening in season um like north american cup and world cup where have you won what competitions have you won your medals at so far i've only won medals on north american cup so which is one of the development tours um we're getting awesome. closer yeah Get in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is a good question. Uh, who is your closest rival when you're when you're skating? Ooh. Currently, probably Kimberly Boss from the Dutch Federation. She's probably one of the closest. Um, okay. The the women's field this year is really really tight. So we're all within a couple of tenths of each other. Awesome. And who? And which countries are kind of um, tending to win the World Cups at the moment? Who's who's strong? Uh, Great Britain, Germany, and Russia, and the Canadian girls. Awesome. Okay, um, this is a great question. How fast have you ever gone when racing? What's your fastest time? What's your PB? Thirty-five k an hour is it so far? Wow. So I bet that is faster than m I hope most of the students have been in the cars with their parents. Not sure. <laughs> Let's hope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay. 140 is the new, uh, new goal. Hopefully. All right. How long uh, is it hard to keep your head off the ice when you're racing? In some corners, yeah. So next strength is a big one because of the the less time your head's on the ice, the less vibration goes through it, which tends to be better for your brain. Um, but in some corners, so corner 16 in Whistler, actually quite a few corners in Whistler, the, the G-force and the speed that you're going at is so high that no one can keep their head up through 16. And that's pretty similar for quite a few other tracks in the world. There's, there's certain corners that you go through and you just put your head on the ice because it's going to go down anyway. Wow, that must be very scary. <laughs> Um, that kind of, I guess, may, maybe rolls into our next question, which is why is it called skeleton? Uh, I should know. I believe it's because it's basically the skeleton of a bobsled. Okay. So, like, without all of the um, casing and everything else to protect you, basically. <laughs> all righty. And um, how long have you been doing the sport of skeleton? This is my sixth season. So six years all up. Yep. Um, next question from Bathurst is, what is the best position to be in when you're racing? Uh, in terms of form or in terms of, like? Yeah, I guess probably form and what's going to help you walk away with the win. Okay. So the idea is to stay straight on your sled as you can. Feet together, head down, but not necessarily on the ice. Um, and not moving at all. The more relaxed you can be. So when you get all of the slow-mo shots, the more you look like you're bouncing, the better. It means that you're relaxed and then the sled's doing what it needs to do. If yeah. we can go down a track and it looks like we've done nothing, that's been a good run. Right, okay. So a very lazy sport then, not really a lot to it. You just kind of lie there and uh, <laughs> yeah. let the sled do the rest. <laughs> all right, our next question is, who inspired you to start the sport of skeleton? Honestly, nobody really. Um, it was just a case of it. I, I saw um, the rest of the World Cup field training one day and decided it looked like fun. And that was that was it, really. I guess your, um, your uncle must have inspired you a little bit. Um, can you tell us a little bit about him and what he, what he was the first person to do? Okay, so Uncle Paul was the first Aussie to compete at both the Summer and Winter Olympics. Went to LA for the 100 and should have gone to Moscow as well. And then backed up in 92 uh, in Albertville as a bobsledder. So that's how I'd, I'd always wanted to get into bobsled or at the Olympics because of him. 
Um, whether it was summer or winter, I didn't really mind. Originally, it was more of a summer dream. And then when we came up, we were like, all right, this could be fun. Awesome. All right. Uh, next question is, how often do you train and what kind of training do you do? Okay. Uh, so during summer, I train once a, yeah, once a day, uh, six days a week, just with, with work and everything else. That's about all I, my body can handle. Once we get on tour, though, it's a little bit different because um, we'll, we'll slide uh, during race week, we'll slide four days plus um, a, couple of, a couple of lifting sessions and then we've also got video as well. Awesome. So lots in there. Um, keep you busy then. It's like a full-time job, isn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> particularly on tour. <laughs> All right. What is your proudest moment so far in your skeleton career? My seventh placing in the World Cup in Lake Placid two years ago. Awesome. All right. So another question from Bathurst, um, and you can maybe explain if this is not correct, what is on the bottom? Do your sleds have carpet on the bottom of them? No, it is fabulous. Okay. Uh, unless... So they can't be very comfortable then. Hang on. I got the, I got the question wrong. Okay. Um, in terms of... This makes a good problem. So... <laughs> This part here, which is I'm guessing is what they're referring to as far as carpet goes. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually yoga mat. And there's padding. Oh, okay. So some people like it firmer than others. Um, and we can kind of, basically, as long as it's flat, it doesn't really matter how hard or soft it is, but it has to be flat for the rules. Okay, so you've got a little bit of cushion on there so that it's not just uh, like riding a surfboard, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Particularly, so my saddle, which is this part here. Uh, that keeps me in place. A bit more light, maybe. Um, this bit is padded a little bit. This is the bit that if something's going to hurt, it'll be this part because um, my quads are lying on here and then my ribs are all the way through there. So that needs to be a little bit padded so that we can actually don't end up too bruised by the end of a run. <laughs> How sore are you after you do a race if it's uh, quite a hard surface? Uh, depends on, on how many walls I've hit. If I manage to get down without, without hitting any walls, it's usually fine. Um, but when you start hitting walls, then it keeps like, going to saddle and that tends to be a little painful. Yeah, I can imagine. Not very comfortable at all. All right, um, we've got two more questions from, from St. Philomena's. Um, what was your favorite sport when you were younger? Uh, athletics. Definitely. That's kind of the sport that uh, you were trying. You said before that originally you had a dream of going to the Summer Olympics and that wasn't the sport of athletics, wasn't it? For a yeah. sprinter. Yep, yeah, sprinter, jump up. Um, but even then, it was just one of the sports that, that I love. I, I love running, I love jumping. Um, yeah, it's just, it worked. Awesome. All right, now our last question from our schools is what is the hardest part of skeleton? It's, it's probably staying relaxed at speed and trusting both yourself and the sled that you've put the sled on the right line because sometimes it doesn't feel particularly right coming out of the corner being to trust the fact that you're going to be okay and that it is all going to work. Awesome. All right, so they were all of our questions, some good questions from all of our schools. Um, I, I hope that uh, everyone in, sitting in their classrooms feels like they understand the sport of skeleton a little bit more. Um, Jackie, maybe you can run us through kind of what the next, we've got less than three months now until the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, which is very exciting. Um, can you tell us what you're going to be doing over the next three months? Okay, so the next three months is qualifying for us. We've got until uh, January 14. So our last race is January 13. And it's all guns blazing from here on in. So... This weekend is race number two. We've then got we then get a Whistler the following week. Have a week off, back into Europe for two weeks for two more World Cups. Christmas break, and then the final two World Cups of the year, and that's it. It's game over. So it's going to be an, an interesting few weeks to see how people start handling things, particularly as we get closer to to qualification ending. 
Um, once qualification's yeah. done, we're heading back here for a couple of weeks of training before we head back into South Korea. Awesome. So you said before that um, there's 20 girls that compete at the Olympics. So you have to be in the top top 20 in the world to, to book a spot for Australia. Is that how that works? Slightly more complicated than that. Um, I'm in the fortunate position of being the only one from Oceania. So Oceania, uh, every continent gets a spot. Usually the bigger continents are filled with, with the other quota, quota places. Um, I the plan is to qualify in my own right though, so a single a single athlete nation spot. However, there are between four and six girls going for two single nation spots, all of whom are in the top twelve of the world. Wow! Yeah. So the the girls' for this year is particularly deep and particularly tight, which is good. It's, it's going to make for a really good race, and so far it's proving that way. Um, but it also yeah. makes it a little bit difficult as far as qualification goes for, for everyone, not just not just me. I've, I've got the uh, more comfortable ride to the Olympics, thankfully. <laughs> but that's, I, I guess they want it to be um, competitive for the qualification so that when you get to the Olympics, you're competing against the best in the world. So that's how that competition works. So um, fingers crossed, we'll uh, let our schools know how they can kind of follow your races. Um, we're kind of riding up all of the results that you and um, your fellow Australian athletes um, that are trying to, because all of our sliding sports are trying to book their qualification at the moment. So we'll make sure that we let our schools know how they can follow along because you will be chatting hopefully with them again um, from the Olympic Village, which is very exciting. So they will have to go away and think of some more questions. Not that I think there's any questions left about skeleton. We've covered pretty much all of them. Um, but they will have to think of some um, about the Olympics so that we can chat again with them. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to yeah. say to um, our schools? Yeah, to St. Philomena's, I yes. apologise for the emails that I haven't responded to. I know they're sitting there. It's been a <laughs> fairly hectic couple of weeks, so I haven't forgotten, and I'm not ignoring you, I promise. I will get to them. <laughs> Excellent. All righty. Well, we'll let Jackie go, and uh, I think it's night time over there, so head to bed and get a good night's sleep uh, so that she can do some more training tomorrow and uh, keep on her Olympic qualification journey. So give us a big wave goodbye and uh, our schools will chat to you again soon. Yeah, Thanks, Jackie. No worries. Okay, I've